I, I always found it sort of mind-numbing because it was like, it's not just a gay white man's thing, you know, and to to think that that they had the control over the education, over the funding, over what, you know, Health Canada was allowing in terms of funding to happen, I was just like, I got to the point where I couldn't even go into the building of ACT because every time I would go in there, I would have, I would be met with like a wall and it would get so pissed off. And I think one time I was actually walked out of the building because I started yelling mm -hmm. and going, this is not right. You need to start servicing people of color and indigenous people and native people. And I was treated badly by some of these men. And it was just like, it was appalling because their racism really came out then and it was really evident. Mm -hmm. And it really taught me, you know, a big lesson in that they're not my brothers. And it was very sad because the first people that I was in contact with when I came out as a queer were gay men, were older gay men who were adorable, who loved me, who treated me with such kindness and, you know, gentleness. And then to start seeing the other side of it was just like, it was like a slap in the face, you know? And I, I told them, I said, I've been around this since 83, when it was AIDS cancer. Don't tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about or don't know the history of this awful disease, because I do. I've saw it. I've witnessed, you know, these men perishing within months of contacting it. And they treated me with such kindness and then to be treated with such vileness, you know, years later was just like, it was shocking. And I, I understand why the, you know, Women in AIDS Network came about because they weren't getting the services either, you know. And there was a lot of women of color who were dying unnecessarily because of it.